Okay, so next we're going to look at um, finding some values from a graph. So here we go, we've got the graph of y equals a plus x all over b plus cx. This is what the graph looks like. Um, the first thing to notice is obviously we've got some asymptotes um, and also look at the intercepts here. Um, so we start. Um, we can say that, well, we look at this and say uh, when x is 2, uh, y is equal to 0. So if we've got x equals 2, uh, y is equal to 0. And then if we basically put that into the equation here, we're going to get 0 equals a plus 2 all over b plus 2, uh, 2c. Uh, and we look at that and say, well, what possible values of a uh, could make that 0? Well, the only value that could make that equal to 0 is when a is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we found out what a equals a must equal negative 2. Uh, we then put that a equals negative 2 into this equation here. So therefore we've got uh, y is equal to uh, negative 2 plus x all over b plus cx. Okay, the next thing to do is to kind of use this idea of limits, uh, which we'll kind of come to in a bit more detail, certainly if you do the uh, calculus option at the end of the syllabus. Um, we look at what happens here when x approaches infinity, then y is going to approach uh, 2. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches 2. Now, a little trick here will help us work this out. If we just rewrite this and divide everything in the fraction by x. Um, so it's still exactly the same equation as before, I've just divided everything by x. But this will help. So now I know that as x approaches infinity, well, what's going to happen here? So minus 2 divided by infinity, that's going to approach, well, that's going to become 0. I'm going to have 1 here. b divided by a number approaching infinity, that's going to become 0. And then c. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches 2. So I could say that y is going to become 2 when I just end up with 1 over c like that, because these things here are going to become 0. So therefore, c is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, and then using the same idea as before, I'm then going to put that into uh, what I've just solved now. Um, I also basically now have uh, y is equal to minus 2 plus x over b plus a half x. Uh, and then I again do the same sort of thing here. I look at this and say, well, when x approaches negative 2, um, the y value uh, approaches infinity. So as x approaches negative 2, the y value is going to approach infinity. Well, the y value is only going to approach infinity if this bit on the bottom, the denominator, gets closer and closer to zero. So let's actually think about that. So what in effect I want is b plus half, and it's getting closer and closer to negative 2. Negative 2. Getting closer and closer to 0. So I'll just I'll write it as equal to 0. Um, and therefore, b must be equal to 1. Okay, so basically, as, as b, if b is 1, and as x gets closer and closer and closer to negative 2, this denominator will get closer and closer to 0, and then I'm dividing by 0, and, and therefore that's what gives me the asymptote there. Okay, so there's my final answer. I've got c is a half, a is negative 2, and b is equal to 1. Okay, and you thought that was difficult. Well, this, if anything, gets a little bit even a little bit more difficult. Um, this time here, I've got sketching the graph of y equals and then b plus uh, cx all over a plus x. Um, to probably make this a little bit easier to understand, well, first off, we noticed that what they've done here is basically flipped this equation here. So they've done one over y because 
the B plus CX is on the top, the A plus X is on the bottom. Um, so let's maybe make this a little bit easier. We're actually in effect sketching 1 over Y um, and 1 over Y is indeed this function here. So we're, we're basically doing 1 over that previous graph that we drew. Um, so we've got 1 over Y and again we're using the values that we calculated before. Um, Those were uh, sorry, we've got uh, okay. So there we go. Um, got uh, one plus one over uh, one over two x all over minus two plus x. And um, just using the a, b, and c from, from the previous question. Uh, Okay, we, we can kind of proceed on this in uh, kind of a similar way as before. Um, first off, we, we look at uh, look at the previous graph. And we say that as x approaches infinity, this time y was approaching 2. So as x approaches infinity, y is approaching 2. Therefore, 1 over y is obviously going to approach a half. So I know that as x approaches infinity, this graph here is going to approach um, a half. So, so the limb as x approaches infinity it is going to be a half. Okay, so that's the first thing um, that I can note. I can also look at the other side of the graph and say, well, what happens here? Well, again, as x approaches negative infinity, this graph approaches 2. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 2. And so, in the same way, as lim of x approaches negative infinity, well, if y approaches 2, then 1 over y is also going to approach a half. So I've got the first kind of two parts, first two things to, to put on my graph um, already done. The next thing to notice is to look at what happens here. So when x is 2, y is equal to 0. Now if x is 2 and y is 0, well what's going to happen when I have 1 over y? So when x is 2, well if y is 0, I'm going to end up with 1 over 0, so that's going to give me an asymptote there because obviously I can't divide by 0. So when x equals 2, I'm going to get some kind of uh, asymptote. And then next thing to look at I know that when x approaches negative 2, x gets closer and closer to negative 2, y gets closer and closer to infinity. Now, if y gets closer and closer to infinity, well, what happens when you do 1 over y? Well, 1 over infinity, that's going to get closer and closer to 0. So there we go. I've got four bits of information already. And that's probably enough to actually start sketching, sketching the graph itself. So here we go. That's my graph. Um, I know that the asymptote is going to be when x equals 2. So if I sketch in that asymptote there, when x equals 2. Um, and I also know that it's going to get closer and closer to half. So I can put this in here. Um, and it's going to get closer and closer and closer to that. So I'm going to end up that kind of shape here. Well, that gets closer and closer to infinity, and that goes closer and closer to zero. And I also know that it's going to um, go closer and closer to infinity at this point here. 
Okay, but I'm still missing a bit of information, so let's see what else I can I can derive from that previous previous graph. If I look at this, well, when x is naught, y is minus two. So when x is naught, y is minus two. Um, so one over that. When x is naught, well, one over minus two is going to be minus a half. But remember, I'm doing the absolute value, so that's going to become a half. So I'm going to get when x is zero, y is equal to a half. So I can put that into my graph as well. When x is zero, y is a half. And then again, because I know I've got this asymptote here, it's going to look something like that. And I know when x is minus 2, it's going to be equal to 0. And I also know that it's going to get closer and closer and closer to negative 2, so closer and closer to a half. And it's probably easiest from there just to kind of join it up like that. We could probably work that out as well, uh, but you could probably kind of just uh, for common sense work out that last bit of the graph. So there we go, uh, a very rough kind of approximation of what that graph is going to look like, but we've got all the key features. We've got the asymptote as x uh, approaches negative infinity, asymptote as x approaches positive infinity, and the asymptote as x approaches 2.